Our guest, Jonathan Karp, is editor-in-chief and publisher of 12, and he worked on Senator Ted Kennedy's book, Kennedy's book, True Compass, a memoir. Thanks for being with us. Thank you. He joins us from New York this morning. First of all, start off by telling us, how did this book come together? Did Senator Kennedy approach you? How, how did it all happen? Senator Kennedy retained one of the best lawyers in Washington, Bob Barnett, who represents most of the um, Washington officials who write major autobiographies. And Bob contacted several New York publishers. And about two years ago, at, at around exactly this time, we first met with Senator Kennedy at his home in Washington. And he was incredibly impressive. He told us he wanted to write a full and honest account of his life. He wanted it to be personal history, but he also wanted it to be national history. And the two were intertwined. He wanted it to be the story of his family, the roles that his brothers and his parents had played. His parents were the only people in American history ever to raise three United States senators. So we were very excited about it, and we decided to pursue it. And we were fortunate enough to uh, prevail. Tell us about the process of creating the book. Uh, Senator Kennedy talks about it uh, early on, about how he and his wife would, would, would read it and reread it to each other. But share with us how, what your involvement was and, and how the process went. Sure. Well, first of all, reading it aloud to each other, that was actually something that they picked up from David McCullough and his wife, Rosalie. Uh, Senator Kennedy was a big fan of David McCullough's work. And he wanted this book to have that same kind of historical richness that McCullough's work has, and I, I think it does, actually. And in working with him on the book, he had quite a lot to draw upon. He had been taking notes for 50 years, if you can believe it. Actually, he'd been taking notes longer than that. We actually had some notes that he took first when he was seven years old. He dictated them to his governess after he, um, after he received his first communion, which was from the Pope at the Vatican. And um, in 1960, when he was campaigning for Jack, uh, for Jack's presidential campaign, he began dictating notes and writing them in his own personal hand. And, and after every meeting he had with a major leader or after every uh, important trip that he took, he would take notes. And he was studious and diligent about it. So we had over 50 years of notes, which I had the privilege of being able to read. Um, he also participated in an oral history project at the University of Virginia. I believe he was the first uh, senator ever to be part of this very uh, extensive oral history project. And so there were thousands of pages of documents that we were able to work from. And then in addition to that, uh, the collaborator on the project, Ron Powers and I, we met with Senator Kennedy for hours, days on end, at his homes in Hyannisport and in Washington and Miami over the last year of his life. And we interviewed him, and we were able to get even more detail. And uh, it was an extraordinary experience, probably the most extraordinary experience I'll ever have. Our guest, Jonathan Karp, is editor of True Compass, Edward M. Kennedy, a memoir. You can join the conversation. Democrats, the line is 202-737-0002. Republicans, 202-737-0001. And Independents, 202-628-0205. We're also online on Twitter at C-SPANWJ. And our email address is journal at c -span Dot org. Jonathan Karp, what in the book stands out to you? I know you've been talking about it a lot over the last couple of days, but is there one image or one moment in the book that keeps running through your mind? Well, I can tell you what he wanted the message of the book to be, and that's perseverance. He wanted people to understand that he believed that the key to life was in never quitting. And it was certainly something that I saw firsthand as he was dealing with this illness. He never showed any sign of weakness or despair. He never complained. Uh, there was no crying in the Kennedy house. That was one of the chapters of the book, actually. And he, he really held to that. He was a very strong man. So what I took away from the project, I mean, it was a firsthand glimpse of somebody and I'd seen him on the floor of the Senate making these passionate speeches on behalf of progressive causes, but I didn't really have much of a sense of the private man. And I found there was great 
depth to him and also um, great humility and subtlety to him. Um, I, had, I had the privilege also of working with Senator John McCain on his autobiography, Faith of My Fathers. And one of the traits that I found in common between John McCain and Ted Kennedy, they're both humble men. Senator Kennedy actually didn't like to use uh, the word I. He didn't like to speak in the first person. He would use you instead. He would say, when you passed this or when you have the privilege of serving in the Senate. And I asked him about that after I'd noticed he was doing in a lot of conversations. I said, why won't you ever say I? And he said, well, I think that too many people take credit for things. And this is my way of saying that it's more about you than it is about me. And I just was really impressed by that. Let's take a look at an excerpt from the book where Senator Kenny Kennedy writes, I could never have dreamed back then how intimately I was destined to experience cancer's dark realities. As my story draws to a close, I am living with cancer, and I know that I will die with it and likely from it. Still, I continue to sail as much as the weather allows, and I pray. He loved to sail. He said that uh, sailing was where the, uh, the spiritual meets the physical and that it reminded him of the natural order of life, that every voyage has a beginning, a middle, and an end. And uh, there's a lot of uh, sailing imagery through the book. Obviously, the title, True Compass, refers in part to his love of being at sea. It was also, I think, a reference to the, the true compasses in his own life, which were his faith and his family. Let's go to Matrice, who's calling on the Democrats line from Chicago, Illinois. How you doing? Good, thanks. Nice. All right. All right. Um, the one question I wanted to ask you was that how did Edward Kennedy and all his other brothers were so um, popular in the African-American community? Um, me, as a young man growing up, I always heard about the Kennedys, um, always doing a lot of things for African-Americans. Um, you go back to Martin Luther King. Um, you can even say the Black Panther Party, all these different organizations that these guys were sympathizing to. Why, why were they so huge, and why were they so... Um, are uh, relevant in the African community during the civil rights movement and to where we are right now with Barack Obama. Thank you. It's a great question. He believed that civil rights was the moral issue of his time and Jack Kennedy was um, a leader in this and was one of the first, uh, I think he was the first president to put the civil rights issue in moral terms. And Senator Kennedy believed this as well and he made it one of the causes of his life. He, he, he tells a story on a personal level. Um, when he was in the army, he, he got into a tussle with an African-American man, and uh, they, uh, they, came to, uh, they came to blows. And it was, it's a funny story. You should just read it in the book. And it, it doesn't really get to the more serious aspects of race but, it, race, but it was one of his first encounters with race in a personal way where there was conflict. He said he could feel some of that man's anger. Let's go to Marie on the independent line. She's calling from Elmira, New York. Hi, good morning. I was just um, wanted to make a comment basically that a lot of people don't even know how much they benefit from some of the legislative things that Senator Kennedy put through and um, sometimes I get a little upset because I don't think that any American family actually has given as much from the oldest brother dying in the war and a lot of emphasis is on um, Kennedy the one bad chapter which would be Chappaquiddick and I'm really anxious to get the book to read exactly what he said about that and maybe you could expand upon it a little bit for me and um, thank I'd be you. happy to Thank you for that. And it's interesting. I actually, at one point, I sent him an email and I said, you've, you've authored something like over 3,000 bills and uh, passed, uh, I think, 300 major laws. Uh, have you ever kept track of it or do you keep a record of it anywhere? And the answer that came back via email was, no, I've never dwelled on things like that. Um, one, of the, one of the best stories in the book that, that really illustrates his commitment is on health care, I think. He was in the hospital with his son, Teddy Jr. Uh, when Teddy was about 12, he had bone cancer. And he was, he was receiving experimental treatments from, uh, from a um, program instituted uh, by the NIH. And the treatments were successful, 
but the grant expired. And all of the other kids in the hospital who were taking these drugs could no longer afford them. 